learned the chapter proteins from DNA to proteins. So we call it as a gene expression. Chapter 14 is composed of the seven subjects starting from the gene core. Finally, we will learn the, the uh, several the modification. Okay, first our subject is a gene calls for proteins. First of all, we have to learn to, to understand this experiment. We have to learn the life cycle of neurospora. So in Korean, we call it as a bulgumpang gumpangi. So this is species of fungi. Okay. So their life cycle is composed of the haploid. So they are composed of the haploid. And they also, after they fused each other, so they are composed of the diploid. However, Neurospora is haploid for most of its, its life cycle. Okay. Okay, so this is a neurospora. Okay, so they have the last of a spore inside. Okay, they have last of a spore like this. Okay. Okay, so let me start from the wild type neurospora. So wild time neurospora has all of the enzyme to catalyze the all the reaction needed for growth. For example, uh, they the neurospora they need the arginine. Okay, so usually the arginine is the they made it from the glutamate. After that, they use the enzyme E. The glutamate it change it to uh, oronitin. After they use the enzyme F, this one change it to citrulline. After they use the enzyme E and H, so citrulline it finally change to the arginine. So they need arginine for growth. However, the wild type neurospora they have the all of the enzyme. So that's why they can grow on minimal medium. Minimal medium means that containing only the minimum component necessary for growth. They only have the small, small amount of the, uh, the component. For example, the wild type neurospora, okay, they can grow in the just a minimal medium, but they also grows on minimal, minimal medium supplemented with ornithine, citrulline, and the arginine is like this. Okay, and uh, let me go to the mutant neurospora. For example, this is the minimal medium, the wild time neurospora can grow. Okay, so the neurospora, they have the spore is like this. Okay, after that, so X-ray. X-ray, usually the induced mutation, the DNA in the or sexual spore. Okay, so because the X-ray induced some mutation, mutant neurospora grow uh, can grow on only the complete medium. Complete medium means that medium containing everything. <coughs> so this medium containing every uh, nutrient. Okay, but they cannot grow on the minimal medium because some of them, some of DNA gene is mutated. Okay, so they need additional nutrient to grow in minimal medium. Okay, How, let me start from the uh, mutant neurospora strain, uh, strain one. Okay, for example, mutant one, they cannot grow in the minimal medium. 
they cannot grow on the minimal medium supplemented with ornithine. They cannot grow minimal medium sterling uh, with uh, supplemented with uh, sterling, but they only grow a minimal medium supplemented with arsenic. Okay, so based on this result, we can think that maybe this enzyme C is blocked. So, okay, is blocked in the enzyme C because they only can grow after we added arsenine. So based on this result, we can say that so X-ray can in induce the mutation in the Zin C. Okay, this is conclusion. Another experiment is that uh, they used the mutant neurospora strain two. Okay, they cannot grow in the minimal medium. They cannot grow minimal medium supplemented with ornithine, but they can grow in the sterling and arsenine. Okay, it means that the this mutant strain is blocked in the enzyme B because uh, after we add citrulline, they can, uh, they can survive. After we added arsenine, they can survive. However, after we added ornithine, they cannot survive because the enzyme B is the, they have the, uh, they have non-functional enzyme B. So based on this experiment, we can say that X-ray induced mutation in gene B. Okay. Let me go to the another final experiment. So this uh, mutant strain three, they cannot grow in the minimal medium. However, they can grow on minimal medium supplement supplemented with any one of the three supplements. So based on this experiment, we can say that this is the, this mutant three is blocked in the enzyme A because the, mm, they can, uh, uh, they can survive after they added ornithine, sterling, and arsenine, but they cannot survive in the minimal medium. So based on this experiment, we can say that X-ray induced mutation in the gene A is like this. Okay, so totally we call it as the one gene, one enzyme theory. So if organism cannot convert, cannot convert one particular compound to another, it means that it lacks an enzyme required for the conversion. So, so maybe the X-ray mutated gene calls for that enzyme. So based on this experiment, we can say that each gene, gene A, gene B, gene C, they can specify the particular enzyme. So gene A is the specified enzyme A, gene B is specified enzyme B, Gene C is spaced by enzyme C is like this. So this is recorded as one gene, one enzyme theory. Did you understand it? I try to explain it very simply, okay? This is the, this theory is very difficult to understand, but I try to explain it very simply, okay? Do you understand it? Okay. Okay, okay. Next, let me go to the second subject, information flows from gene to proteins. So this one, we call it as a central dogma from gene to proteins. Okay, so usually the central dogma, uh, if you already take the advanced uh, biology course in the, during the high school, at that time, the, the most important thing was the central dogma. So today I will teach the central dogma very briefly, okay? Starting from the transcription and translation. So this is DNA, 
So DNA is transcribed to the RNA. So this is recorded as the transcription. So DNA is transcribed to the mRNA. So this is recorded as transcription. So DNA sequence is copied to the complementary RNA sequence. This is recorded as the transcription. Simply, DNA is changed to RNA. Another one is translation. So RNA is translated to the amino acid sequence. So RNA is translated to the amino acid sequence. We call it as a translation. So today we will learn the detailed information procedure of transcription and also detailed procedure of translation. Okay. But there is some exception to the central dogma. Some virus, for example, retrovirus. Some virus, retrovirus, they have the RNA. Their genome is composed of RNA. So sometimes retrovirus convert RNA to DNA. So this is recorded as a reverse transcription. Their starting material is RNA, but they change it to the DNA. So this is the exception to the central dogma. Usually the DNA is transcribed to the RNA. It's okay. Okay. Okay, so let me start the third subject, especially the transcription. So today we will, in third subject, we will study the uh, transcription. So DNA is transcribed to produce RNA. Okay, let me start from the RNA polymerase. So this is the RNA polymerase structure. It's like this. So this is the RNA polymerase. So in chapter 13, we learned DNA polymerase structure. So DNA polymerase is open, shaped like open right-handed, but RNA polymerase is a little bit different. Okay, they did not look like the open right-handed, but a little bit similar. Okay, so usually the, in the center, so DNA and RNA is existed in the center. Okay, then also DNA polymerase function is uh, they add nucleotide from the five to three direction from five to three direction. Okay. So let me start from the RNA polymerase. They also uh, plays important role in the RNA synthesis. So during the RNA synthesis, so nucleotides are needed from to five to three direction, exactly same as the DNA polymerase. However, DNA polymerase, they need RNA primer RNA primer, the, the green color is RNA primer, okay? However, RNA polymerase, they do not need the primer, okay? They do not need this kind of primer, okay? Okay, so uh, this is RNA polymerase. So let me start from the transcription initiation, okay? Initiation. Previous, previous exam, I asked the student describe the full procedure of transcription. Okay, okay, and also our homework has the, this kind of question, explain the full procedure of the transcription. Okay, so this because this is very important. Okay, let me start from the initiation. So this is the DNA. So, oh, so DNA has the, some promoter region, a promoter region. So RNA polymerase, this RNA polymerase is bind to the promoter region. And this RNA polymerase has the helicase, helicase activity. So it can start on wind 
on mean DNA strand is like this. So RNA polymerase itself has the helicase. What is helicase? Their function, their function is to unwind the DNA, but RNA polymerase itself has that activity. So RNA polymerase bind to the promoter region and start to unwind DNA strand. So what is promoter? So, so this is promoter. So in DNA, we have the promoter region. So DNA is that the region uh, to, to, tell, uh, uh, tell, to tell the enzyme, to tell uh, promoter uh, uh, explain that the enzyme, RNA polymerase, you have to start here. Okay? And we all, in DNA strand, we have the uh, two strand. One strand we call it as a coding strand. The other is a template strand. Okay? So promote tell that so the bottom is the template strand and the upper is coding strand. So promoter had a signal. So they say that you RNA polymerase. Okay, okay, listen, RNA polymerase, you have to start from here. And also the lower strand is template strand and the upper strand is coding strand. This is the role of promoter. Okay? And also, promoter has the initiation state, uh, initiation site. So they have the initiation site. Okay. So uh, listen. Okay. RNA polymerase, listen. Okay. You have to start from here. Okay. So promoter has initiation site where transcription begins. Okay. So this is the initiation. Okay. You have to explain. Okay. Second one is elongation. Okay? So <clears throat> usually the RNA polymerase unwinds about 10 base pair at a time. So unwinds, for example, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 is right. Unwinds 10 base pair at a time. And also so for example, they have the, you can say that this is template DNA. In, in, in this case, this is template DNA. And this is the coding strand. Okay, template strand is starting from the three prime to five, five direction. Okay. So this is the, the lower is template strand the upper is a coding strand, okay? So RNA polymerase move, move along the DNA template from the three prime to the five prime. Uh, you have to think about, always think about template strand, okay? The standard is template strand. Template strand is uh, starting from three prime so RNA polymerase moves along three prime to five prime direction. Okay, because they always, they don't care about coding strand, but they care about template strand. Okay, so after that, RNA polymerase produce RNA transcript by adding five prime to three prime direction, five prime to three prime direction. Always RNA polymerase produce RNA transcript from the initially starting from five prime to three prime direction is like this. So this is the elongation. Okay. So important thing is DNA strand move along the DNA template, template DNA, template strand from to three prime to five five prime. After that, they added nucleotide from five to three prime direction. Okay. So finally, final stop is termination. Okay, termination. So RNA polymerase reached the termination site. So termination site had some signal. 
for, for example, some low, low dependent, low independent, but today I will not teach it directly. But they have some signal. You have to stop here. So RNA polymerase reaches the termination site. After that, RNA transcript and RNA polymerase are released from the template. So this is the transcription termination. But, 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 but in the termination site, there is some signal, but today I will not teach you in details. Okay? Okay, very simple, isn't it? Okay, so this is the transcription. Okay, so let me start from the, go to the uh, fourth subject. Pre-mRNA transcript are processed to, uh, uh, to prior to translation. The before, so today we will teach it, mainly teach transcription and translation, but I will teach you some of the processing step. Okay. Do you see here? So after transcription, they will make the pre mRNA. Okay, so pre mRNA is processed. After that, they will make the mRNA is like this. So in post subject, we will learn the processing step. Okay? So before uh, to understand what is exon, what is intron, you have to understand this experiment. Okay? Kunyakson, do you know what is uh, exon, what is intron? Can you explain? Okay. Or uh, Mari? Can you explain what is exon, what is intron? Okay, you're right. So intron is non-coding region, and exon is coding region. Okay. Okay. Two, uh, two, uh, two, uh, to differentiate the intron from the exon, you have to understand the nucleic acid hybridization experiment. Okay, so usually the DNA is composed of the uh, double stranded like this. So we always denature. So if we hit it, maybe 95 or around 100 centigrade. So DNA is the denature. So they will make the one single strand and the other single strand is like this. Okay? And also, there is the RNA strand which is complementary to the DNA. Okay, so we added single stranded RNA with complementary sequence to the DNA. After that solution is cooled, cooled very slowly. At that time, single stranded one case, most of the case, DNA is the, they may be generated to double stranded. But some cases in DNA template, RNA strand can hybridize it like this. They can make the hybrid molecule is like this. Okay, so this is, we call it as nucleic acid hybridization. Okay, let me go to the prokaryote. So, Che uh, Jayan, do you know prokaryote has the intron or not? Prokaryote genome is very, very small. Do they have the intron? They don't have the intron. They only have the exon. How about uh, eukaryote? Our eukaryote genome is very huge. Okay, 95% is intron. Only 5% is only the exon. Okay, so 
starting from the DNA. So DNA is denatured. After that, add it, add mRNA. After that, cooling down. So finally, we found that mRNA and template st strand, they hybridize like this. They are collinear. Co they are linear. There is no interruption. Fully complementary each other. They are fully complement each other. However, in the eukaryote, they did the same experiment. Eukaryote is composed of exon, intron, and exon. So just added mRNA, did a nucleic acid hybridization experiment. After that, they found that some loop is like this. Okay, so DNA strand and the RNA is in the bottom, but they found some loop is like this. Loop is like this. So it means that loop of DNA do not have complementary mRNA sequence. They cannot bind to the mRNA. But so, and also you can see that the so mRNA sequence in the DNA is interrupted by the intron. So based on this loop, we can find that, you can say that hybridization experiment revealed that non-coding uh, non-coding intron region in eukaryote gene. Okay? So you have to understand the nucleic acid hybridization experiment step. So based on their, ex uh, their uh, ba based on that experiment, we can find, we, we found some loop. So we think, uh, so this is the intron region. Especially we call it as non-coding region. Okay? So, okay, so the reason why I teach it is the non-coding intron and uh, uh, intron and exon. I have to teach it processing process. Okay, and eukaryote and prokaryote, they have same processing and pre-mRNA processing step, especially five prime capping. So DNA is transcribed to the pre-mRNA after that, pre-mRNA is processed to the mRNA. First step is five prime cap is added. Okay, so what is five prime cap? You can see here. So this is the mRNA. Five prime end of mRNA. So they always add seven methyl guanosine. So methyl is located. CH3 is located here. So this is guanosine. So they added 7 methyl guanosine. Okay, in front of the mRNA. So this 5 prime cap protect mRNA from being digested by another enzyme. So it it protect. So they need cap. So if we so cap is uh, protect our head. In this case, five prime cap protect mRNA from being digested by the other nuclease. Okay, the first step is five prime capping. Okay, this step is uh, occurs in prokaryote and eukaryote together. Okay. Another processing, second processing step is polyated. Okay, so pre-mRNA has the, some special signal is AAU, AAA. So this is the recognized some enzyme. And after that, apt AAU, AAA, the enzyme cut in this region. Okay, one enzyme cut this region and another enzyme added AAAA adenine, 100 or 300 adenine in the tails. And also, this poly A tail is also important in the mRNA stability. 
Okay, if they don't have if they don't have the tail, they are not unstable. Uh, they are unstable. Okay. Okay. So poly A tail is important for mRNA stability. So this is poly A tail. Is also occurs in prokaryote and eukaryote. However, I will go to the RNA splicing. This in this is only occurs in eukaryote. Why? Yozon. Why? This is only occurs in eukaryote. Why? Because prokaryote they don't have intron. Only eukaryote has the intron. Okay, in the eukaryote, we have to remove the intron by the RNA splicing. So if you see the figure 1410, there is a detailed information of RNA splicing, but you don't have to know the full procedure. I will teach it very simply. Okay. So intron has some special into, this is exon and intron and exon. So intron had some specific sequence, signal sequence, starting from the GU, and in the middle they have A, and the final they have AG. So this is the signal. So you don't have to memorize this sequence. So you, this specific sequence commonly find in the, the intron and also some sp uh, splicing machinery we call it as a SN RMP small nuclear ribo small nuclear ribo uh, ribonucleo proteins SN RMP recognized this sequence at that they cut it like this so this is mature mRNA they don't have any intro. Okay? But you don't have to memorize this step. The important thing is that during RNA splicing, intron has some specific sequence. And also, SNRMP bind to there. So they, ini uh, they initiate pro splicing step is like this. Have that RNA intron is spliced they will make the finally make the mRNA is like this. Do you understand it? <laughs> so this is the processing step. Finally, we will learn the translation step. So okay. Now we learn So today we will learn the transcript central dogma. So we learn the transcription. And also after transcription, pre mRNA is made. After that, processing step is happens. So we learn processing. After that, in fifth subject, we will learn the translation. Okay. Now we will learn the transcription. Okay. Ah, uh, translation. Okay. Okay. So this is fifth subject. The title is Genetic Cores Determine the Protein Sequence Encoded by the mRNA. Okay, so let me start from the genetic code. So this is genetic code. First of all, we call it as a codon. For example, UUU, UUC, UUC, UUA, UUG. This is three, they, they are composed of three base. So we call it a three-letter word. Codon is a sequence of three base. Okay, and also for example, they have some specific uh, sequence. For example, AUG. They are they are in course for maturing. This is start codon. And for example, UAA and the UAG and UGA is stop codon but they did not call any amino acid. Okay, so, and, and also, let me go to the, the leucine. C-U-U, C-U-C, 
C U A C U G calls the recent. More than one codon incurs recent. In most cases. However, for example, tryptophan, only one U G G is calls calls for tryptophan. But however, more than usually more than one more than one codon in cause per amino acid. Okay? So we call it as a redundancy. Poly and uh, penylalanine, they have a redundant, redundant codon. Leucine, they have the redundant codon is like this. Isoleucine also, they have a redundant codon is like this. So this is the genetic code. Okay, so and also, okay, so we'll go to the translation directory okay six subject will cover the translation so let me start from the transfer rna we call it as the trna so this is the trna structure okay trna structure starting from five prime to three prime is like this okay so they have the trna has the some specific site so three prime reason they have the amino acid attachment site. So usually here, amino acid is attached. And they also have the anticodon. So in the center, they have anticodon. For example, anticodon is a complementary to mRNA codon. Okay, so five prime to three prime, they have C, C, G. Okay, so mRNA codon is the, we always starting from the five prime to three prime, they are CGG. So what is the CGG? CGG is cause for arsenic. Okay, for example, this tRNA, they have the anticodon CCZ, means that they attach it, arsenic around here. Did you understand it? I try to explain very simply. And also this tRNA can interact with the ribosome. So I will see you later. Okay. So who identified uh, this RNA structure? Uh, tRNA structure? Who identified? Who identified? Okay. So Kim Song Ho, he he is the he is the scientist. Okay, okay, he, he is the, he was the professor in Incheon De. So he identified tRNA structure in 1917. 1917. Okay, he received the RNA the three dimensional structure is like this. And uh, during 1990 or during 2000, we thought that maybe Dr. Kim Song Ho will receive the Nobel Prize, but he didn't receive Nobel Prize yet. But he is the top list, okay, top candidate in Nobel 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 Prize. Okay, 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 three RNA, okay. And uh, at that, we, I will teach you the, the tRNA charging. Okay, so tRNA has the uh, amino acid attachment site. Usually, the amino acid attached here. This procedure we call it as the tRNA uh, charging tRNA. So, okay, for example, there are several. Amino acid tRNA thin days. Okay, this is amino acid tRNA thin days. For example, this is the cysteine tRNA thin days, and this is the um, leucine 
tRNA 18 days, and this is the methionine tRNA 18 days, this is arsenine tRNA 18 days, uh, this is glutamine tRNA 18 days. So each amino acid tRNA 18 days, so amino, amino acid tRNA 18 days, okay, activate specific amino acid. For example, this cysteine tRNA 18 days activate cysteine. This leucine TRNA 18 days, they activate the new leucine. This methionine, TRNA 18 days, they activate methionine. Specific amino acid and charges, okay, charges TRNA, okay. Okay, so for example, this, this is the example, uh, this is the alanine, TRNA 18 days. So first of all, activate alanine. So they always use ATP. So alanine is charged to here. After that, they, they, they charge it. This is the uncharged uh, alanine specific tRNA. So after that, this tRNA is charged to here. So finally, they will make the charged tRNA. So this tRNA has the the alanine at the end. Okay, this is the procedure. However, you have to know each amino acid tRNA thin days activates specific amino acid in order to charge a specific tRNA. So specific tRNA means that in this case, the tRNA uh, uh, which has the anticodon, which has the uh, Cause for the, the alanine specific tRNA with that amino acid is like this. This is charging tRNA's procedure. Okay. Okay. After that, we will start. We will also learn some basic uh, knowledge of ribosome. Okay. To uh, to teach it the translation, I have to teach it some fundamental. First of all, I teach it the tRNA. Second, I teach you the charging tRNA procedure. Finally, I will teach you the ribosome. So ribosome is composed of the large subunit and small subunit. So they have some E site, P site, A site. The main function of the RNA is holds mRNA and also can hold tRNA is like this. Because the tRNA has some function, they can interact, this tRNA can interact with the ribosome non-covalent, okay? tRNA can bind here, bind here, bind here. And also they are composed of the several rRNAs. For example, this is the bacterial case for example, bacteria has a large subunit. They are composed of 23S rRNA. And they are composed of 5S rRNA. In small subunit, they have the 16S rRNA. So they are composed of rRNA, and also they are composed of several ribosomal protein. For example, in this case, 50S, they have 31 rRNA protein, ribosomal proteins like this. Okay, and also they have the E site, P site, A site. Okay, let me start from the A site. We call it as this is where charged tRNA is bind. And P site, okay, where T tRNA is add its amino acid to the growing chain. And this is the E site where tRNA sit before being released from the protein. Okay, so next step I will teach the uh, specific function. So main is the A is the just the amino acid tRNA site, and P is peptide tRNA site, and E is exit site is like this. Okay. 
So let me explain the, the translation step. Okay, this is very difficult to understand. I try to explain very simply. Okay, 좋은 선 사고 있는 거야? Okay, wake up, wake up. Okay, I try to explain very simply. Okay, 이 가연 잘 듣고 있어? 오늘 지각했네. Okay. Okay. Translation. They are composed of initiation, elongation, termination. Okay. I will teach. I will teach initiation. Okay. So initiation, usually the small subunit, bind to the recognition sequence. Usually the small subunit bind to the AUG start cordon. Okay. After that, usually start cordon is starting from the mechoni. AUG is start, start from, uh, has the uh, the course for mechoni. So usually the mechoni charge the tRNA bind to the AUG start cordon. After that, large ribosomal subunit join to bind to it, bind, binds it. After that, they will make the initiation complex, it's like this. Okay, so this is the initiation complex. So, okay, let me go to the elongation step. So, we have several elongation steps. One, two, three elongation step. Okay. So I will explain it very simply. Okay. Wake up. Okay. Wake up. Okay. Each one. Wake up. <coughs> so AUG is start codon. Next codon is in this case AGC. Okay. So codon recognition. We, we call it as a codon recognition. So anti-codon, okay, so this is incoming tRNA. They have the UCG. So this is complementary to the AGC. So anti-codon or incoming tRNA is bind to the codon at A site. So this is bind to the here. So this incoming tRNA is bind to the here, A site. <coughs> at, at that, peptide bond formation is happen. Okay, this tRNA has the methionine. This tRNA has serine. Okay, so methionine is transported to the serine. So methionine, in this case, methionine is linked to the serine Okay, because the large subunit has the peptide transfer activity. They have a transfer activity. So methionine is a transfer to the serine. Okay. After that, this P site, after that, after that, peptide transfer is happen. After that, ribosome is moved around. Ribosome shift, shift down one codon, next codon, they are shift down next codon. Okay. Okay, so after that, the, okay, so peptide, uh, amino acid transfer to the serine. Okay, so this P site, they have the empty tRNA. They don't have um, amino acid. A site, they have methionine serine. After that, this ribosome, uh, moved one codon. In this case, uncharged tRNA is located in E site and P site, they have tRNA with had methionine serine. Okay, it's like this. So tRNA carrying 
growing polypeptide chain is it located P site. Okay, after that, A site is opened. After that, new uh, anticodon of incoming tRNA is bind to the codon at A site is like this. Okay, after that, peptide transport is happened. So the same thing. This process is repeat. Okay, so this is the elongation. Okay. Okay, starting from, the, okay, wake up. Codon recognition. Okay, peptide bond formation. After that, this is the, the <coughs> uncharted tRNA is go to the east side. After that, uncharted tRNA is go outside. After that, new incoming tRNA is bind to here. Okay. After that, another peptide transport is happens. So they made the methionine, serine, tyrosine is like this. After that, this empty one is moving around and new one is come to A site. Okay, this is a repeat, is like this. Finally, there is the, I will teach you the termination step. Termination is a very simple. Okay, so usually the in the A site, stock codon is come to the A site. For example, UAA, UAG, UGA. So usually the release factor, usually the tRNA is wind to the here, but at this time is a release factor. Bind to this complex. Okay, so at that time the release factor disconnect polypeptide from the tRNA. This release factor disconnect polypeptides from tRNA. Okay, after that remaining component mRNA and the ribosomal subunit is separate. It's like this. So this is the translation termination. Okay, okay. Let me go to the first step, starting from the initiation. So usually they made the initiation complex. It's like this. After that elongation happen, starting from codon recognition, peptide bond formation. Okay, and also this step is the repeated. Finally, the stop codon is entered the A site. At that time, release factor bind to the here. At that, termination is happen. It's like this. Did you understand it? I try to explain very simply. Okay, and let me explain the, the final step. Polyzone, okay, okay. So today's subject is very difficult to understand. So usually, in in our molecular biology or molecular biology course, we always teach the transcription for in two chapter. Translation is always teaches in two chapter. <coughs> In biology course, we teach this subject only within one hour. I try to summarize it. If you see the, your textbook, there are huge amount of information is there. It is hard to understand. So I summarize. I did it. Okay, so I, I try to teach you some very important criteria for life. What was the first thing? Don't give up, okay? Don't give up. Okay? Okay? Don't give up. Okay? 
patients and for system. Someday, Jang Sang-yeon will be the CEO of Samsung Electronics. We don't know. But if you, if you, if you did patient and persistent, you will. Okay. Okay. Don't give up. What was second thing? Activity. Most important. Second one is don't be late. This is very important. Very important. If you are late, first time is it's okay. Second time it's okay. Some third time is not okay. I'm 김도연이한테는 이제 노동법상에서 시상을 줘요. 시상하고 승진을 줘야 돼요. 이게 예를 들면 하여튼 그냥 예를 드는 거 알겠죠? 그럼 이제 하루 종일 김도연은 뭐할 거야 이제? 컴퓨터 하지 않겠죠? 인터넷 쇼핑하고는 한 거야. 좀 이제 한계가 있어요. 이튿 날 3일 뒤에 이제 오사카에서 오죠. 김도연 씨, 네, 뭐 나가시겠어요? 아니요, 전 절대 못 나갑니다. 그러면 이제 그냥 놔둬요. 그냥 한달 뒤에 와요. 나가시겠어요? 마음이 미쳐요. 근데. 할 일이 없으면. 근데 어떤 사람한테 착하느냐? 지각하는 사람한테 착하는 거예요. 그 다음에 회사에서는 지각을 하면 그 사람은 믿지 못해요. 이제. 그 사람은 일을 안 하려고 그래요. 가장 중요한 일을 하죠. 숙제 제출하거나 시간에 클래스에 오거나 그냥 준비를 해야 돼요. Today I came here around 8.30. 8.30. Prepare everything. Okay. When you submit your homework, don't be late. Okay. Okay. 사람을 믿지 않게 되면 사람을 믿지 않게 돼요. 여러분들 아까 취업하고 싶었을 텐데 회사에서 평가하는 게 별게 없어요. 사람은 그게 비슷해요. 회사 업무가 단순하기 때문에 그게 비슷해요. 아까 뭐 별로 없어요. 이 사람 이 사람을 평가할 때 업무를 그렇게 비슷하게 해요. 근데 가장 기억에 남는 거는 이 사람이 더 늦어졌으면 이 사람이 더 아홉 시 되는 거예요. 믿을 수가 없으니까 신뢰할 수가 없으니까. 오케이. Most important. 오케이. I I I said it several times. Okay, but this is very because this is very important. Okay? Don't be late, okay? Okay? So today we will learn the final subject is polysome. Okay, so this is the mRNA. Okay. 아직 안 끝났어. Okay, so this is the mRNA. So but if you see the the microscopy electron microscopy structure we can see some the we can see lots of the uh, ribosome is bind to the here but usually found that in the mrna some ribosome is bind to the here one mrna several ribosome is bind to the here okay so if you see here at the end this is a polypeptide polypeptide size is the uh, large at the first, it's very small. Okay, so polysome means that consists of multiple ribosome. 
and they are growing polypeptides moving around the mRNA. So at the end, there are very long polypeptides. So it means that from one mRNA, we can produce multiple copies of polypeptide at, at one time because several ribosomes bind to the here. So they made the polypeptide is like this. Okay? So in for one mRNA, usually one ribosome bind to it here, and they, they start to the polypeptide. After that, before finishing the, this step, another ribosome bind to it here, and also before finishing the full step, another polysome bind, bind, ribosome bind to here, like this. So this is the polysome. So usually the, from one mRNA, we can produce multiple copies of a polypeptide at a time, okay? So this is what we call it as polysome, okay? So today we teach it, we, we cover from DNA to the proteins. The most important thing was the central dogma, okay? We learned full procedure of transcription, full procedure of translation, we also learn full procedure of processing. Okay, so do you have any other question today in the lecture? So what was most